You're listening to the Chronicles of Living Podcast, where we talk to everyday people about everyday things in the past, present, and future. Now let's talk. dreamers how's everybody doing today on you can do it wednesday i miss you guys listen up to to rally and the fuse we are learning always turning later Switching to gear, let's go As we climb up the hill, don't slow down Pedal a little more The mind is working, it's in control Your wheels are turning a little more Going higher and up the notch Keep it steady, don't watch the clock Go round, round You're just tuning in This is Adion, your dream pusher Your lifeguard Saving you from the world, from yourself From some real bullshit And this is the show for everyday people doing everyday things, living everyday life. You know what's extraordinary, folks? You're listening to Chronicles of Living podcast show. And uh, today, the topic is, hold on. Never know who you're going to meet tomorrow or who you will meet tomorrow. And that can go from so many angles you know I'm not just talking um, friends relationships you never know who you're going to meet tomorrow that can just change your whole life in a great way hopefully (laughs) but then you can meet some people that can change your whole life in a not so great way But in that case, I believe that the reason that you met that person is to learn. That's a, that teachable moment or teachable season in your life, you know? So you have different people that come in your life for so many different reasons, for a season. Some stay forever. Some stay, like I said, to teach you a lesson. And some come in your life to just catapult you to the next level. So that's what we're talking about today. And first off, I just want to say, if you missed the show on Sunday, definitely go check it out. I had a special guest on, Mr. Floyd Stokes, and he's doing big things. He is the founder of the American Literacy Corporation and... His organization goes around to different schools and they read the kids and they get men together, all of these men together, certain times of the year to go and show up. You know, we have so many single homes. That is a good thing when they see men coming in to read because we have, you know, the statistics out here where you know, there are pictures for as kids that's coming from single homes. Some of them, you know, they have parents that are incarcerated. So that's a good look for them to see the opposite so they can know that they have options. 
but definitely check out Sunday's show if you didn't get a chance. It was a little challenging to put that show together because I had to go out of town. I had to take my son back to school, which was a long ride, and then I had to go out of town still to do the interview. And I took my laptop, and the interview was at a library, one of the libraries that um, Mr. Floyd tours at. And I tried to set it up the same way I normally set up my interviews through Skype. And then once we got it all set up, we we figured out that is a lot of feedback. So y'all know me. <laughs> Basically, we worked around everything, and we had to just share my mic. <laughs> But, hey, nevertheless, we made it happen. Then I want to apologize because that was my first time ever being late. And this is, well, you know what? I'm going to take that back. Let me think about it. Maybe in the prior shows, I might have been probably five minutes late because I had to get off the side of the road somewhere to do the show. But it's been a very long time. And... So we pre-recorded the show because I had to get back on the road and I had to find Wi-Fi. I had to find a Wi-Fi signal because I had my laptop. I wasn't using my cell phone and that was a task. (laughs) It would not connect. It was crazy, but nevertheless, it's up. So definitely go check out that show, support his organization If you are a teacher or you know about a school that could benefit from men coming in to read to the kids, then by all means, definitely visit his site, um, superreader.org. Superreader.org, that's his site. So, let's get on with the topic. Yeah, you know, you never know who you will meet tomorrow that can make major changes in your life. And this topic actually came from someone that I met um, while I, you know, when I moved here and one of my visionary dreamers. And he told me that spirit put it on his heart to tell me to give me this topic. But like I tell y'all, I don't run with topics just because I get them. I run with them when my spirit feels it's time to talk about them. And this was probably a month ago that it gave me this topic. So kudos to you. You know who I'm talking to. (laughs) And um, that brings me to this. Um, He, this uh, visionary dreamer, he's young and He's into music and he's experienced a lot of ups and downs, even though he's young. But go figure that he would come to, or we would both come to work for a place that's really based on meditation, yoga, you know, things to get your mind right. Who would ever guess that I have a music background and enough that I can help him and mentor him. And he's so far now, and he's he's like, you know, he's so ambitious and energetic that he's just always like, I need another assignment. I need something to do. I don't know what to do with this energy. But I constantly, you know, just sit him down and pull him back and make him see, like, look how much you have accomplished. And then when he looks, it's like, wow, yeah, I've never did this before. Or this is something that I wanted to do, but a lot of people made me promises and it never happened. So this is what I'm saying about you never know who you're going to meet tomorrow. So it sparks a new light in me because I love music, you know, and it, it's opening me up to look at different things to um, different projects that I want to put together. So we're both benefiting, you know, and just us meeting is going to 
change our lives. It's going to alter our lives in different ways because we decided to do some work together, you know, or I will say God helped us to connect because we don't even know how we started talking and how we got on a conversation about music. Oh no, I know. I think I saw one of his videos and then I showed to mine and that's how I went. But when you think about you're in a big environment and there's tons of people, what are the odds that you would meet somebody that have something in common? Same thing about one of my other visionary dreamers, you know, that I talked about before. And she has her own business and we talk about how um, basically things has been taken off for her as well. And it's just helping me to really fine tune the projects that I'm working on and I'm putting together for you guys to be able to take advantage of digitally, you know, like they think that they're getting more help out of me than I'm getting out of them. But really, I really truly believe that it's balanced and it's changing our lives in so many ways, not just the fact of the projects, but our energy levels, our vibration. I see um, we're all much happier because we are like-minded and we're able to share with each other and we can understand each other, you know, and we encourage each other. So when you run into people that's like-minded and, you know, you're always the cheerleader, you always need somebody to be your cheerleader. And I've talked about that on a couple shows, you know, I always, you know, look for, I'm not going to say look for, but I always pray for cheerleaders to come into my life. Yes, I've always had support, you know, from different family members and friends. That's a definite. But sometimes you want cheerleaders that um, don't know you because when your loved ones are cheering for you, it's like, well, that's my mom. So even though some mothers and some fathers are not cheerleaders for their kids, but still, that's my mom. So she's going to she gonna be there for me. But when you meet people, total strangers that come into your life and they're rooting for you and they are giving you confirmation about the things that you're doing and that you're on the right track and they allow you to talk to them and be a genuine heir and give you feedback that is really powerful because we got so many people in this world that have dreams and visions locked up inside of them and they want to go forth and start working towards them but they feel like they don't have anybody they don't have anybody to bounce the ideas off off of or they have fear and so they don't have anybody to just encourage them and tell them that you know what it's going to be good it's going to be all right just do it you know so even with relationships, you know, sometimes y'all know I've been single for a long time and sometimes, you know, you can give up and just say, you know what, maybe I'm meant to be single. And then just when you're not looking, there it is, you know, again, major change to your life, hopefully in a positive way. So this is why I'm saying you got to hold on because a lot of times we can get so overwhelmed with life. And when we're in the midst of being overwhelmed, we just can't see that light at the end of the tunnel. And a lot of times 
we're ready to throw in a towel, ready to just give up and just accept what is in front of us instead of, you know, showing up for yourself and realizing that, okay, you're falling into a victim mode. As my girlfriend was saying, she was like, you know, she was, we was talking about that, how you can get caught up in your own stuff and fall into a victim mode. And then if you fall into that mode, it's hard for you to dig yourself out. And then if you fall into the mode to the point that you call only the people that you know is going to co-sign on what you're going through. Meaning like they're going to, they already victim to themselves as well. So y'all both sitting there, you know, swapping stories, being miserable instead of you getting out the house, you know, trying a new place to go, meeting new people, going to some type of networking event just to see who God will bring into your life. You just never know. Sometimes... Like, just like me, y'all know I'm spontaneous. Well, at least I tell y'all that. And, you know, when things are on your heart to do, if you start really doing them, you'll be amazed at how your life will start to change. Just like this situation, you know, I talked about the fact of, I just knew I wanted something different. I knew I wanted to live in a different way. I wanted to do tiny living. I wanted to meet some new people. I just wanted to do something new. And I and I wanted to figure out who I am at this time, space, and reality, you know, in my life. And because I stopped looking at my situation or that I was living in a place that I really didn't know too many people. And I started just looking online. I came across this place and then I went even further by listening to my spirit and taking a chance on me, taking a chance on me to trust myself to just go out there and see what happens, you know, to go for it. And what happened was, I'm a better person. I am, I feel like I am the best version of me right now. And I know that I'm only going to get better. But I am, if I look at my life over a course of, I say, the last 20 years, I believe I'm the best version of myself right now, you know. And when I say that, I mean how I think, how I view things, the level of my vibration, my energy, um, my thoughts, my thought pattern, all of these things. Um, The way I just cleaned my closet. Y'all know if y'all listen to that show, I just cleaned out my closet. I let people go that just didn't want to, you know, be a part of my life anymore. I just let go of all the baggage. And if you didn't hear one of the shows when I talked about my Oracle cards, I pulled this Oracle card um, a couple days ago. And it said endings and beginnings. And so the card basically was like, it was saying you have to release the old to receive the new. And, oh, excuse me, y'all. Y'all know I just had dinner. (laughs) But I have to release the old to receive the new. And it's just like the other day, I had my Visionary Dreamer Club, and I was telling one of my um, Visionary Dreamers about the whole clean out your closet thing. And I drew up the scenario, and I'm like, you know, you think about it. You got this closet, and... You have all of these clothes in this closet back from years ago. You know, you're just still holding on to certain things like this is my favorite dress. These are my favorite pants, whatever. 
you holding on to the point that when you open up the closet, you got to like squeeze your hand through the clothes and, and really toggle with separating the clothes to get in to pull something out. <laughs> so if somebody wanted to bless you with new clothes and you know you need a new wardrobe, maybe you lost weight, maybe you gained weight, maybe you going for a new opportunity, you know, and you need a different type of styling of clothing. And then say you really don't have it like that. You know, you don't have the money to go shopping. But all of a sudden, God brings somebody in your life to bless you and say, you know what? I have some clothes and I just thought about you and I want you to have them. What you going to do? Let them hang on a the side of the chair or something like that, or that treadmill that you probably used for a few months and <laughs> became a clothes hanger. I've seen that in a few people's houses. <laughs> but what I'm getting is, I mean, getting at is, you have to clear the old so you can meet new people. You have to let go of the mindset that nothing is going to change. Because you have control. Anytime you want things to change in your life, all you got to do is change. You have to change first. You have to look at yourself first and just write your list out and write down the things that you're not too cool with. Be honest with yourself. Write down the habits that you're not too cool with, you know? And then work on that. And then you'll start attracting the right people tomorrow that can take you to the next level, take you to a new level, introduce you to people with opportunities that will benefit you, that will benefit your purpose in life. You just never know. It's been so many times throughout my life that... I just met people out the blue and learned new skills and or learned more about myself or got a good connect for something that I was working on or a good connect for my son or my daughter. You know, you just never know. So you got to prepare yourself mentally, physically, you know, emotionally. You have to prepare yourself for the people that you're going to meet tomorrow. You have to be ready for that. Because there's so many times I've seen people miss great opportunities because they wasn't prepared. They wasn't prepared to meet that person that was ready to open up the doors for them. Rather, it was because of fear, doubt, you know, disbelief, lack of faith. All of these things play a part of keeping you from being prepared for an opportunity that can change your life, you know, keeping you from being prepared for that right person, you know, far as a relationship. All of those things, when you hold on to yesterday, it will keep you from meeting that great person tomorrow you know, or great people tomorrow. So you got to hold on. You cannot give up. Because see, when you give up, you're giving up on yourself. You're giving up on your loved ones. Again, you're giving up on people that you're assigned to. I've talked about that. I think, what show? I think, um, are you moving into something or nothing? About how we think that we're here as individuals to do our own thing. But no, we're here for everybody else. Our experiences, our obstacles, struggles, and issues, they're all for growing, you know, reasons for to teach us more about us, more about the things that we need to work on, the things we need to change the people 
that we need to stay away from, you know? And sometimes you can outgrow people. Sometimes you can outgrow a relationship, and that's either with a spouse or with a friendship. Some, and it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't mean that you can't still have love for that person. You definitely can still have love for that person. Everybody that fell to the wayside for whatever reason, you know, stop calling my phone because I just couldn't, I wasn't available for them or I couldn't be available for them because I decided to start showing up for me more than I was showing up for everybody else. Um, I love every last one of them because they were people that I didn't know at one point. And when I met them, I can identify certain things, certain skills that I gained from knowing them. Rather is I sharpen, you know, my musical skills or video skills or whatever, or maybe I just sharpen my character, you know, just from knowing them. Rather it be in a good way or a bad way. You know, I've met people that help me to sharpen um, the way I observe people because they might have did me dirty. So now I know what to look for, you know, in somebody that I might meet tomorrow or they did me right and I have more gratitude in my heart because of them coming in my life. So it's so many things that you can gain from people, but you definitely got to acknowledge all the people that was in your yesterday, all the things that you benefited from knowing the people that came from your yesterday. So when you meet your people that's for tomorrow, you know how to receive them in the right way. You know how, you know why. Sometimes you might not know why they came into your life right away, but if you've been paying attention to the people that was in your life yesterday, your discernment should be on point. I know mine is. My discernment is crazy right about now. I can discern somebody's spirit from the gate. You know what I mean? And I'm so happy about that. But even though God blessed me with that gift, sometimes the people that you meet tomorrow, sometimes they can be both to you. They can be good and bad. Meaning like, They could come in your life and you could learn some new things from, but they might have a certain agenda that if you're sharp enough and you know, you can feel it, but you'll know how to separate the two and just accept the person for who they are and just watch your back (laughs) until it's It takes its course, you know, the friendship, the relationship or why you met that person until it takes its course. Because sometimes we meet people and there are things that we need to deal with internally that we don't know we need to deal with internally. And those people that you might meet will bring that out of you, whether it's bad or good. You know, those people might annoy you in a certain way or they might disappoint you in a certain way. And sometimes they could be a mirror to you, to the things that you haven't addressed in yourself. And this is how God works. He send people in your life for so many different reasons and I really can recall a lot of the different people that I've met throughout my life. And I can identify today why, why I met them and why did they come in my life 
at the time they did, why they stayed for the length they did, or why they dropped to the wayside in the timing that they did. Because I'm more in tune with me now. I'm more in tune with who God created me to be. When you get more in tune with yourself, that's when you can really walk in your purpose with excellence. Because you know the things that it's not acceptable. You know what you shouldn't be doing. You know what you shouldn't be an, be allowing to come in your life or who you shouldn't allow to come in your life. You know it from the gate. You know what I mean? Or either if you allow them to come into your life, you know the distance. You know how close you need to allow them to get to you. And then learn as you're, you know, in whatever type of association with them. But everybody that I've ever met throughout my life to this point, even if I don't talk to them, I have grown so much that I've learned to appreciate the ones that I felt hurt me or disappointed me, you know, or did some shystiness to me. I've learned to appreciate each and every last one of them. Now, I might not tell all of them because sometimes, you know, you don't need to make those phone calls. You don't need to reconnect. But I know I release them in my heart. I know I send blessings and love to them throughout my prayers. And I trust that, you know, God is going to get the message through them and make them feel it that I'm okay. You know, I'm okay with whatever the relationship was. But it's time for the people that's for tomorrow to come into my life. To see the new heights that I'm supposed to reach. And when I say I'm supposed to reach, I mean you are supposed to reach too. But you got to first, like I said, you got to release the old so you can receive the new. So many of us hold on to the old, to the old memories, which is cool. But you got to make sure that you're not holding on to old memories, wishing upon a star. And you know that everybody grows. Everybody, you know, as you get older, well, I hope. (laughs) This might not be true for everybody. So let me rephrase that. Most of us (laughs) grow. And most of us want different things in life as we grow. So therefore, that's when you got to know that those yesterday memories are just that. And that's where they need to stay. Sometimes you don't need to resurface those yesterday memories with different people, you know, because they might not be beneficial to you now and where you're going tomorrow with the people that you're going to meet tomorrow, you know. So we got to, you know, really pay attention to where we are today because when you start to really pay attention to your today then when that tomorrow comes that person comes you'll know exactly why you know exactly why they came at the time and that they came you know so hold on do not give up on yourself whatever you're going through in life right now Whatever you're going through, whether it be, you know, the job, you know, you're not feeling the job no more. People at your job is just, they whack (laughs) or they're just not the right people you need to be around and you really need a new job. But right now you're just not in a position to get that new job. Hold on, because you never know. You might 
one of your friends might call you and say, listen, I met somebody and they have a position and I told them about you and they told, you know, they told the person about your skill set, you know, and how well qualified you are to work for them. And then boom, you just got a new job. You know, you have to stay positive. You, I know it's hard. I know y'all probably like, hey, Don, please keep it real. But I am. I've struggled plenty of times in some of those dark days to stay positive. But you know what I used to do? I would call somebody else up and just encourage them. And that will always bring me back. Like, there's always somebody doing worse than you. Trust me. There is always somebody in a worse position than you are. You got to hold on if, you know, you're a single parent and you feel like you don't get a break. You always had the kids and, you know, you don't have, you feel like you don't have a life of your own. Trust me, I've been in a position where it's not that, I mean, I love every minute that I had with my son, but I never had, um, you know, that whole, oh, he going to go away every summer. That never happened. My son was with me from day one on only time. I think my mom took him for a month, one year. And that was because I was, you know, transitioning, moving, um, changing jobs, but she took him for a summer and then he went to a summer camp for a week. I'm telling y'all this, and and my son is 19, about to be 20 in a couple months, but was with me all the time. Yes, I did. When he was younger, maybe like under five, I had some babysitters when I was in Philly and um, Georgia, but for the most, yeah, he was with me all the time. So there have been times where I was a little overwhelmed, like, dang, I just need a break. I just want to go away. You know, even though he was never a problem child, but just being an adult, you want to kind of get out. You kind of want to, you know, go away or do some things, you know. So I say to you, listening, the single parent out there, I've been there. And what you got to do is you got to do little things for yourself. So I would go and maybe get my hair done or get my, my feet or whatever done because I'm a person that pretty much do my own hair. I don't trust folk too much. <laughs> I've had some situations. So, yeah, I'm very careful about who I let play in my hair. <laughs> but there are times or things that you can do. And if you really don't have it like that, you know, you go on Groupon. I've been on Groupon a few times, you know. They have little spa certificate, I mean, not certificate, the run or something close to your job. Oh, man. Don't tell me this. Come on. Okay, I know I just went out for a minute. Okay, I'm going to cut the show because I don't need this happening again. <laughs> Y'all know every now and then, Wi-Fi act a little cray. But you never know if you take that time for yourself on your lunch break. If that's the only time you really have to yourself, go somewhere. You never know. You might meet somebody. It don't have to be just about a relationship. You might just meet a new friend that can introduce you to new things and, you know, be a good buddy to talk to. Just start taking some chances on yourself, getting out, doing different things so that God can bring those tomorrow people in your life to help you, to change, to help open up some doors for better opportunities for you, to hope, I mean, to help open up some doors for opportunities for your kids, you know? Your kid might be very talented in a certain area and then, just because you decided to do something different and go somewhere, you might meet somebody that's in the field that your kid 
you know, needs to be in or wants to do, you know, an instrument. They might want to learn how to play the piano. Next thing you know, you go somewhere and you find somebody that teaches piano lessons. I'm telling y'all, we are in control and we do have the capability to manifest the things that our heart desires. It's just about timing. It's time after time again, I have manifested stuff when I wasn't in position financially to, to get it on my own. There's been plenty of times I've manifested it in a way that I might have came across somebody or came across a place or just something happened that allowed me to be in position or to be blessed with the thing that I needed or the opportunity that I needed or the help that I needed. So I'm going to end this. Sorry for the little disconnect, but y'all know how this show go. <laughs> it's real, <laughs> real, real. So I just want to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Never know who you will meet tomorrow. Start manifesting the things that you desire by keeping a positive mindset, envision it in front of you, writing it down, write out. What is it that you want? What do you want to happen in your life tomorrow? Who do you want to meet tomorrow? What do you want to do tomorrow? Get your journal out, get your paper out, and write it down. Write it down and look over it every day. And when you do that, you put it in your subconscious and you will manifest it. It will show up right when you least expect it. Trust me, I can definitely testify to that over and over and over again. Y'all know I share different stories and I'm going to keep sharing them. So y'all can know it's real. We are all in control of our life. Whether you realize it or not. Whether you want to accept it or not, what you think about the most is what you are going to attract more of. So if you're thinking about, you're in debt, you're thinking about nothing's going to get better tomorrow, you're not going to meet somebody that's good for you tomorrow, it won't happen. You're going to keep attracting all the bad. If you stay in a positive mindset or even when you dip off, Bring yourself back in some type of way. Listen to some good music. Turn on a comedy. Something. Something to get your mind right. So that you can stay vibrating at a high level. And when you vibrate at a high level, good things come to you. Good things come to you in so many different ways. So, hold on, y'all. I love you guys. With all my heart, listening all across the world, I just love to see that because that is what I manifested. I said this show will be heard all across the world. And this is what I'm saying to y'all about holding a vision, sticking to it, writing it down. These are all the things that I did. I wrote it down. This podcast will be heard all across the world. It will help people and touch lives all across the world and when i look at the stats it's all across the world don't know how y'all felt it <laughs> but i'm glad that y'all come back and y'all listen and y'all inspire me y'all just don't know more than you know so i appreciate all of y'all continue to come back download the show share the show like the show you know so i could keep coming on here and just talking to you guys. All right. So until Sunday, this is Adion, your dream pusher, your lifeguard, saving you from yourself, from the world, from some real bullshit. And this is Chronicles of Living Podcast Show. 
the show for everyday people doing everyday things, living everyday life. You know what's extraordinary folk doing a damn thing the best way we can. I love you guys. Peace. Thank you for listening to Chronicles of Living, where we talk to everyday people about everyday things in the past, present, and future. And if you are pursuing your dreams, I'm proud of you. Because the best part of life is when you decide to live. To keep up with us, please visit chroniclesofliving.com. Until next time, this is Adion, your dream pusher. I love you guys.